Imagine if, before you ever took a drug, doctors could actually predict which drug would work best for you, because they already had information on how organs in your own body were likely to respond. Organs on a chip research is bringing that day closer. This emerging technology allows scientists to watch the cascade of events that takes place in organs in response to drugs or during the disease. Organs on chips are 3D biochips, no bigger than a computer memory stick, that contain living human cells from an organ or a tissue, engineered in layers and channels. Substances such as air or blood can be delivered continuously, and the cells can interface with other living tissues just as they do in the body. Mechanical forces can replicate breathing, blood flow, or muscle contraction. Engineering organs on chips. Cells grown in petri dishes receive nutrients, but they are isolated from the cell's normal environment inside the body. When scientists grow cells in 3D chips, they can add cellular interactions and mechanical forces so that the cells can feel and act right at home. Making organs on chips is like preparing a layer cake. Using microengineering techniques, scientists begin by building a plastic mold with hollow channels. Once the mold hardens into a flexible transparent chip, it's time to add the ingredients. First, line the channel with living human cells. The cells can be taken directly from the desired organ or lined with stem cells which can mature into any type of cell in the body. Scientists can even include multiple cell types in the channel to more accurately mimic complex structures in the living organ. Second, add fillings involved in the organ's function, such as nutrients and oxygen. Finally, add mechanical forces, such as breathing or the motion of the gut, in the same proportions as those occurring in the actual organ. Organs on chips at work One impetus of the new technology is to improve drug testing. On average, it takes about 12 years and billions of dollars for new drugs to reach the market. Most never really make it that far, and many are eliminated when animal testing uncovers toxicity or other problems. Others are discarded when testing in humans shows they aren't as safe or as effective as predicted. Organs on chips have the potential to shorten the time and cost of new drug development by identifying these problems early. Because organs on chips can be made with cells representing different populations they can address differences between groups. Men aren't really the same as women, and children are not the same as adults, nor do different populations always respond to drugs identically. Furthermore, it is difficult to study rare diseases, problematic to conduct studies in pregnant women or infants, and it's unethical to expose people to lethal toxins. Therefore, organs on chips enable researchers to study things that wouldn't be possible otherwise. Some of the current organs that have been manufactured onto chips are First, lungs on a chip. The interface of lung and capillary cells is where many health problems begin, such as inflammatory responses to environmental toxins. It's also where aerosol-based drugs enter the body. These chips were recently used to model inflammation and to create fluid on lungs. This life-threatening condition can occur as a side effect of a chemotherapy drug. By watching the lung on a chip react to this drug, scientists saw that breathing motions worsened the drug's toxicity. The surprising finding could lead to new ways to minimize the side effects. Artery on a chip Organ chips are not only about acute diseases. This one can give Researchers an unprecedented view of how atherosclerosis develops in coronary arteries and how activation of white blood cells related to inflammation influences the risk of heart problems. This improved understanding could lead to novel anti-inflammation therapies and eventually to new tools to predict, to monitor and to treat atherosclerosis. Other hearts on chips are studying whether new drugs have heart damaging side effects or not. Guts on chips. In this one, 
A thin membrane is lined by intestinal cells and the microenvironment of the intestine is recreated by flowing liquid through adjacent channels and exerting pressure similar to the motion of the guts. Under these conditions, the cells spontaneously develop hair-like projections that cover the lining of the small intestines. Researchers have even been able to grow microbes on the surface of intestinal cells in the chip, which is an important step forward in culturing more of the living bacteria from the gut. Although work remains in recreating all aspects of the human intestine, the gut on chip could become an essential tool in examining how drugs are absorbed through the intestine and in studying digestive diseases. Other organs on chips in development include bone and cartilage, bone marrow, which is very important in studies of radiation, brain, which is important in studies of drug permeability, cornea, fat, kidney, liver, which is a major organ of drug metabolism, nerves, pancreas, which is essential in studies on insulin producing cells, reproductive tract, skeletal muscles, and skin, as well as tumors on cells, which could lead to personalized cancer therapies. So while individual organs on chips hold enormous potential for understanding and testing organ-specific effects, the human body is more complex than what an individual chip can actually replicate, which is why researchers are working to link individual organs on chips into one virtual human. The goals are to gain new insight into the diseases and to predict how a drug will affect an individual organ as well as the rest of the body. So let's take a small example to see what we can actually do with it. We could for example mimic infections where we can add bacterial cells into the lung and add human white blood cells. These are the body's defense system against bacterial invaders and when they sense this inflammation due to infection, they will enter from the blood into the lungs and engulf the bacteria. Here we can see this happening live, in an actual human lung on a chip. The blood cells have been labeled so that we can see them flowing through. And when they detect that infection, they begin to stick. They stick and then they try to go into the lung side from the blood channel. And you can see here, you can actually visualize a single white blood cell. It sticks, it wiggles its way through between the cell layers, through the pores, out on the other side of the membrane. And right there, it's going to engulf the bacteria labeled in green. Well, you just witnessed one of the fundamental responses our body has to infection. Today, organs on a chip and the emerging human on a chip technology represents a small subset of all cell types, tissues and organs in the body. For studies where no organ chip exists or where the complexity of the interactions being modeled exceeds what technology can replicate, Approaches such as animal research are our best option, but these chips have the potential to transfer drug development and study of disease. Thank you for your attention.